Of course, iron is not just necessary for the developing brain, but also the function of the adult brain. And one of the main mechanisms for this relates to the production of chemicals in the brain called neurotransmitters. And iron is a necessary cofactor for the action of two enzymes, tyrosine hydroxylase and tryptophan hydroxylase, that are responsible for the production of dopamine and serotonin, respectively. This means in an iron deficient state, the brain is going to be deficient in both dopamine and serotonin. This was confirmed by this study, a randomized trial of women aged between 18 and 35. So first of all, at baseline, study subjects with iron deficiency were both slower at and performed worse on cognitive tests. And when iron levels were restored, improvements in cognitive function were five to seven times greater compared with those subjects who didn't have an improvement in iron levels. So with this knowledge, it's fair to say no parent would ever knowingly deny their child a diet with adequate iron. And so they might turn to Google to find foods rich in iron to feed their children. The same Google which curates, some would say censors, health-related search results in line with its partnership with the World Health Organization. Hence, the top result for my search for foods good in iron were plant foods, with no mention of meat anywhere. This is an absurdity. You see, iron comes in two forms, heme and non-heme. The heme form is by far the most bioavailable, and it's only found in meat or seafood. The iron in plant foods, like spinach, on the other hand, is entirely non-heme. And in fact, the absorption of iron from spinach is somewhere in the range of 2 to 12%. And despite claims to the contrary, it's unlikely that vitamin C is going to rescue you. A recent randomised control trial, these pesky bits of research again, found that vitamin C offered no benefit in improving the absorption rate of non-heme iron. And it's not just spinach that has poor iron absorption. This paper found the bioavailability of iron from five commonly consumed legumes was in the range of 1 to 2%. And the low bioavailability of iron from plant foods is no doubt a major contributor to the rate of iron deficiencies in vegans and vegetarians, which is three to four times greater than the population average. To promote plant foods as a good source of iron is borderline criminal, if for no other reason than iron deficiency is the world's most common nutrient deficiency, affecting about two billion people. Of course, iron is not the only nutrient that's more bioavailable in animal foods. The animal form of vitamin A is 12 times more bioavailable than its plant-based counterpart, meaning you need to take 12 times as much beta carotene compared to retinol, which is found in animals. Another nutrient that's far more bioavailable in animals is vitamin D3, which is two to three times more effective at raising vitamin D stores than the plant-based version, vitamin D2, 